key facts you need to know about the 2020 census. It's so important that everyone in our community hears this message. And so today, Carolina, who works on my team, is going to provide a Spanish translation to each of the next five key points. Antes de comenzar la conversación, quiero compartir un breve resumen de los puntos más importantes que usted debe saber sobre el Censo 2020. Es importante que todos en nuestra comunidad escuchen este mensaje. Así que yo, mi nombre es Carolina, trabajo para el congresista. Voy a interpretar en español los puntos más importantes. So five key points. One, everyone counts. The census counts everyone living in our communities. Regardless of your citizenship, immigration status, or age, it's important that everyone get counted. Yes, that includes infants and toddlers not yet even enrolled in school. Entonces vamos a hablar de cinco puntos más importantes. El primer punto, todos cuentan. No importa la ciudadanía, el estatus migratorio, la edad. Es importante que todas las personas sean contadas. Y esto incluye a los niños, a los infantes, pequeños que todavía no estén en la escuela. Two, the census does not include a citizenship question. The 2020 census does not include a citizenship question and it's critical that everybody living in our communities is counted and feels comfortable responding. Número dos, el censo no incluye una pregunta de ciudadanía. El censo no incluye esta pregunta y es fundamental que todos los que viven en nuestra comunidad sean contados y se sientan cómodos respondiendo. Three, the census is confidential. Your information and data are safe and confidential. Census Bureau staff face a $250,000 fine and are five years in prison federal prison for wrongful sharing of personal census data. Your information is safe. El censo es confidencial. Su información está segura y es confidencial. Los empleados de la oficina del censo tienen que pagar multas hasta de 250 mil dólares y hasta cinco años en una cárcel federal si comparten esta información del censo. Su información está segura. Four, the census is easy. You can complete it in the language of your choice. It takes less than 10 minutes to complete online at 2020census.gov, 2020census.gov. You may also complete via phone by calling in English, 844-330-2020, or Spanish, 844-468-2020. El censo es fácil de responder y usted puede responder en el idioma que usted prefiera. Toma menos de 10 minutos completar el censo en línea en el sitio 2020census.org. También se puede completar por teléfono llamando en inglés al 844-330-2020 o en español al 844-468-2020. Five, the census is important. This is how we count our population once every 10 years. It determines how many representatives our state has in Congress fighting for your interests. And it determines the allocation of federal resources that are allotted to our community, including schools, hospitals, roads, public works, and other vital programs. Our community benefits the most when everyone is counted. El censo es importante. Así es como contamos a nuestra población una vez cada 10 años. Esto determina cuántos representantes en el Congreso tiene nuestro Estado para proteger sus intereses y determina la distribución de recursos federales que son destinados a nuestra comunidad. Esto incluye escuelas, hospitales, vías públicas, trabajos públicos y otros programas vitales. Nuestra comunidad se beneficia al máximo cuando todas las personas son contadas. Great. Thank you, Carolina, for the translations. I'm going to repeat the numbers again one more time just so everybody has it. You can do it online at 2020census.gov or call by telephone English 844-330-2020 or Spanish 844-468-2020. Voy a repetir una vez más la página donde las personas pueden llenar el censo es 2020census.org o pueden llamar en inglés al 844-330-2020 o en español 844-468-2020. Great, thank you. And now I want to introduce our guests who are doing great work in our community, spreading the word about the census and, assure, and ensuring that everyone is, is counted. We're joined today by Carmen Patlon, who is the executive director of the, of the Highwood Library, and David McDowell, manager for impact funding and advocacy at the United Way of Lake County. I'll start with Carmen. Uh, Carmen, could you please introduce yourself a little bit more and share how the Highwood Public Library is engaging in the 2020 census? Thank you, Brad, for this invitation and for allowing me to be part of this venue. 
Yes, my name is Carmen Patlan. I have been the executive director of the Highwood Public Library for the last a little over a year, working in a community that is uh, has a dense, hard to count population. We felt that it was critical for the library to engage with 2020 census work. Uh, and we have been working very diligently since January, engaging the population, ensuring that they understand the impact and the importance of registering for the census. Great, thank you, Carmen. And uh, now let me turn it to, uh, to David uh, from United Way. Uh, David, please introduce yourself and talk about what United Way is doing to help us uh, make sure we get everybody counted in the 2020 census. Thank you, Congressman. United Way uh, decided to get involved in the census uh, fairly early on um, uh, last year, largely because most of the families that we noticed are, uh, most of the populations that we noticed are, are, are undercounted are also the populations that United Way and its community partners serve. Uh, so we thought uh, we've got a network of strong organizations, strong community partners, who can work with trusted messengers and can talk to the families um, uh, in those uh, hard to count communities about the importance of the census and why they should be involved. Great. Well, thanks to both of you and your organizations for all you're doing. Uh, now I've got a few questions that I have that I'll ask our, our guests, but uh, I want to let folks know that uh, we're also able to answer questions uh, you might have about the census. Um, in the Facebook Live comments. Uh, so if you have any, you can uh, put them there. Uh, but my first question, I'll start with you, Carmen. Um, what are some of the common misconceptions about the, the 2020 census and how it works and what impact it has? So what I'm hearing from families is that, that maybe their information is not secure. Uh, maybe their information will be shared with the other branches of government. Uh, there's still the misconception that the, the immigration question is being asked and that uh, the government is utilizing this data for tracking purposes that may impact them in negatively in the, in the future. Um, and it's just more paperwork that the government wants from us. So those are the, the common misconceptions that I'm hearing from families in my community. And it's an overall uh, fear or an overall sense of, eh, what does it matter? I, I don't even count. I don't see the money coming to me directly. So. Those are, the, those are the misconceptions that I'm hearing, and those are the barriers that we're looking to overcome with families. Right, and, and we just have to make sure people understand it is so important. It affects everything that's going on in our community, so it's really important. How about you, David? What are you hearing? I actually think one of the uh, biggest mi misconceptions about the census is that people don't care. I don't think people understand the barriers that exist to people actually answering the questions uh, uh, there are four key barriers to folks. The first one is people are hard to locate. If, if we don't know where they are, we can't access uh, either uh, our outreach workers or the census can't access people. It doesn't matter uh, what they think about the census. They don't hear about it and they don't connect to it. The second one is we may know uh, where they live, but it's difficult to get to because uh, there are gated communities or they're in apartment buildings that you can't get access to. Um, or they've got uh, uh, barriers that, ex that, that include fear. It's fear of being scammed. It's fear of strangers knocking on their doors. The, th the, the one that most people talk about is just one of three, and that is people who have a mistrust of government. That is a barrier uh, that needs to get over. But the fourth barrier is that we may know where they are. Uh, they may want to answer the census, but there's a communication challenge. This year, that's uh, uh, especially... Uh, uh, visible through the fact that the Census Bureau is trying to do everything on the internet. Uh, and so folks that are not well connected or not well versed in using the internet, um, they may want to fill out the forms, but they just, they just can't. They don't know how. Right. And, and again, to remind people, it is available on the internet. The phone numbers will repeat them again. And uh, uh, that, I think, is, is uh, one of the important reasons. But uh, Carmen, turning back to you, you know, there's specific barriers that are, are distinct, maybe not unique, but distinct to the Latino community, barriers that are uh, specific to uh, people for whom perhaps uh, English is not the primary language in the home. Do you want to touch on, on some of those? Certainly. So the, the, main, the main concern that we're hearing is the lack of trust. And we'll, we're going to keep reiterating this as the conversation goes, Dave, uh, uh, you know, as Dave mentioned, Brad. It is the lack of trust. Families that, especially new immigrant families, have many barriers that they're facing right now. They're in survival mode. 
uh, right now with COVID in the picture and now especially with all of the rioting happening, it's like a perfect storm against the census. So it, it tends not to be a priority in families' minds right now. So um, especially for Latino immigrants that are new to this country, they don't understand what the census is for. They have a mistrust of local government and of government period. When you come and you ask them, you know, we need to count you because you're important and your information is critical for us to make sure that we have the, the accurate statistics that will determine the benefits that are gonna be coming to our communities, they still, it's like, um, it's okay, I'll do it later. Uh, but then they don't do it. And so I think that coming, creating an, an atmosphere of trusted voices to target this demographic is key. Working with families, um, having someone like myself or someone that I, people that I work with that are Latino, engaging Latinos is making a little impact but again, the overall sense is that I'm afraid. I don't want to give you my information. I don't want to be put in any jeopardy. Uh, I'm new to this country. I don't know what this is. And so I don't want to be counted. Yeah. And when you try to explain to, these, to the families that we're working with that, you know, you, if you count, whether your status is, is uh, you're documented or undocumented, you and your children will determine how much funding will come to each of these communities. If you right. don't count, I always highlight the dollar amount that is going to be impacted for each person for the next 10 years. That kind of resonates with them and they kind of uh, begin to, to break down those walls, but it is very difficult. Yeah, and I want to expand on something you said, you talk about people new, new to the country. The census is about counting everybody and it is everybody, whether they were born here or they, they immigrated here, irrespective of, the, of their immigration status, People who are new, literally people who may have arrived in the, in the last day or two, whether by birth or by immigration, that newborn infant counts every bit as much as the adult who's coming here for, for a job. All of that matters because every single person is a part of the census. And it's been that way since the founding of our country. And it's important to know that this is how we establish our government. And I appreciate the concerns about the, the fears. Uh, certainly there are people and some people in high places in government who are trying to stoke those fears. But uh, I'm gonna quote Abraham Lincoln, government of the people, for the people, by the people. That is because of our census in part. That is census al allows us to have that. And everyone being counted is, is, a, is a, a critical, critical piece of that. Um, and, and David, you touched on this a little bit earlier. The, certainly the pandemic is affecting how we are doing the census. You know, as I said, we've been doing this the entire history of our country. At one point it was people knocking on your door, uh, riding up on horseback. It, today. We're using technology with the internet and phones, but how is COVID affecting it and what should people be aware of? I think, um, I think there are a number of things that are, that are impacting this census. Um, uh, we've talked a little bit about the immigration issue. We're gonna talk about COVID, but I think we also have to acknowledge that the, uh, the protests that are happening are raising very serious issues about uh, a large part of our population that also is um, struggling with full recognition with the African-American community. Um, uh, I think what we've run into with the COVID pandemic is the first problem is we can't talk to people face to face. Much of our outreach plan was based on having trusted messengers talking to people about the importance that we can't do. The other challenge is that places where people gather or connect, those have disappeared um, uh, under social distancing and other trusted messengers like home visiting programs or health departments or health uh, clinics. Those are the also places that we were going to try to reach uh, our targeted populations. And those, uh, they're overwhelmed with uh, responding to COVID-19 and are not able to partner with us around the census uh, at the same time. I think uh, the census is about being counted when you have a large part of the nation standing up and saying, we're not seen. Uh, uh, and there is a, a uh, quite frankly, uh, at the, administrative level on the federal government, an unwillingness to really listen to that message, it's going to make it much harder for us on the ground to say the census is important, you need to be counted when uh, we're struggling with a federal government that is not quite sure uh, whether or not the voices that are coming from the protests are important enough to hear. And I think that's something that we need to acknowledge. We're struggling against what's happening um, uh, at the federal level as well. 
Uh, absolutely. And, and let me say that every voice is important to hear. And that's part of the reason why the census is so important. Uh, the other thing, David, you mentioned, we've lost, the, in many ways, protests uh, contrary to that, but we've lost the public square, the gathering, the places, meeting in libraries and, and things like that. But I'll, I'll raise a question, two questions that are, I guess are linked. Um, we are having gatherings like this. We're on Facebook. People are using other social media or, or uh, video platforms to, to be together with family or friends, even though they're remotely. So something that each of us can do as individuals is when we have these gatherings, remind our friends to, to go get the counted to make sure they've taken the census. Uh, and, and we've seen in, in certainly in, in the 10th county, but Illinois, we're doing better than the national average. We're about 60, 70 percent of the way there. We have a long way still to go. We want to get 100 percent because everyone has to be counted. And so uh, for both of you, I'll start with you, Carmen. Within the context, and you mentioned this in the early, some of the initiatives we're seeing being taken in our communities to, to get that number to 100 percent and, and some of the things that uh, we might still try to do. So what we've been trying to do here in Highwood, uh, when we set out to do this project, we said that we wanted to get, uh, last census, we got to 70.2%. So we said, if we get anywhere over 80, close to 90%, we're gonna be very happy. So we were excited. We had plans to do all, uh, some major events. We um, had a lot of plans, but then all of a sudden they all crumbled with COVID. So we had to become, um, creative on how we reach the population and our hard to count community here. So what we're doing is uh, one of our trusted voices is a lunch mom. So at every lunch pickup, she's reminding families register for the census. This food is made possible because um, of funding that we're getting due to the census uh, resources. And so we are distributing information at every lunch pickup. We have uh, gotten stickers that we're putting on tortilla packs and on tostada packs and on three liter Cokes or sodas at our local, um, local merchants, local grocery stores to stay in front of families. We were able to secure a lot of giveaways. So every time families come and pick up food from our pop-up uh, food distribution, we're giving families a Frisbee, we're giving families a water bottle and we're reminding them you have to register for the census. It is critical that you get counted, that your three-month-old gets counted, that your 12-year-old gets counted. And so we want to make sure that families, that we're in front of their face. And so I think our efforts are working. So far, we're at 63.6% completed here in Highwood. So we're nowhere near our goal, but I feel like we're in a good position right now that if we continue to, to stay on this path, that we can reach that 80, 85 percent, hopefully 100 percent goal. Um, but yes, there are many barriers that are preventing us from making things happen here. For so, right before the shutdown, we had a churros con chocolate event, trying to be as culturally sensitive as possible to our community, and so we had a great turnout. And so we had planned El Dia del Niño, and uh, and uh, ice cream socials. But all of those unfortunately had to be canceled. So we're becoming creative on how we target that audience. And so if we're, we order face masks that we're gonna give away to families that have the census information on it. And so anywhere that they go, they're a constant reminder. This is something that's critical and important that we need to complete. And so we wanna stay in front of this and we wanna stay in front of everybody's face that says, you know, get counted. Your numbers matter and you count. Absolutely. Um, David, how about United Way? Uh, well, we, we made an immediate shift in how uh, we had a very extensive plan uh, working with community partners. We made an immediate shift when uh, uh, in, in early March when the governor um, uh, 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 issued a stay at home order. Uh, our outreach workers basically got on the phone and started calling. We looked for places where there was still connection. School districts are still reaching out to families. Food banks were going to be um, uh, 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 more and more active as folks lost their job. And we've been working to move uh, uh, flyers out electronically or, or delivering flyers uh, to uh, food banks and to the organizations that we're funding through our uh, COVID-19 Community Response Fund to, to get census information out uh, while we're doing that. And we've actually gotten a lot more contacts out 
with flyers than we had initially expected to, but that still isn't as high quality contact as um, uh, talking to people face to face or actually having community leaders uh, as their, whether they're pastors or teachers themselves or other um, uh, sort of places of contact pushing the uh, census message out as well. The census, as Carmen had mentioned, is critically important for programs that are in, uh, uh, really lifesavers for many of our families. Medicare, uh, uh, student loans for parents that are going to have kids going to college in the next 10 years. Uh, the money for student loans and Pell Grants are proportioned by the population. Uh, uh, school breakfast, school lunches, many of the things that are being delivered by school districts now, even though right. they're not open, those are funded through um, census grants. Uh, WIC and Head Start, these are all pieces that are critical to our families uh, and we need to get the count up. So it's, it's going to become more and more important that pastors are talking about this with uh, their congregations that um, places, uh, even when people are gathering around uh, 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 sort of memorializing uh, George Floyd, it's important that the census piece start to be a part of that conversation. If you want to be seen, and if you want to be counted, there are numbers of ways that that has to be done and being in the street and being vocal is one of them, but being a part of the census is also one. And so that's part of the message that we need to start uh, moving out. The other thing that I would want to, uh, would want to mention really quickly is that the census self-response time was originally scheduled to end at the end of July. The Census Department has moved that up to October, so the Census will extend much longer than it normally does, and there's going to continue to be opportunity uh, for um, uh, our community stakeholders as they begin to open up to be more active on the Census, and uh, we're going to be reaching out and trying to make that happen as we stretch into late summer and early fall. Fantastic. Brad, I also, sorry, I also wanted to add that one of the things that has really been impactful for us as well is that we have, I've recruited 13 very active community members and they're my promotoras. And so they're our ambassadors and they are reaching their own networks. And so I think that that is that grassroots effort that is really making an impact here in Highwood is that we get trusted voices from within the community to do grassroots uh, marketing and engaging to their own networks. Uh, yeah, no, I think that's absolutely right. And, and Carmen, you mentioned uh, this idea of community leaders. And I think we do have to convey as leaders the, the uh, responsibility, but also the trust and, and, and be uh, very focused on that. Uh, but also, as others have mentioned, the, um, the, uh, the, the protests that are going on over a 24 period hour yesterday, and, and um, I guess uh, Wednesday night, I was at uh, three protests within the community, all student organized, all organized by our, our young people. And these leaders, it's amazing what they're doing as they're pulling people together. But so I guess this is a, a, a not so subtle plea to our young people to step up and, and lead as well. This is your future. As you touched on, it is about education. It is about what uh, resources we'll get for our, our, our not just primary and secondary schools, but for our universities. Uh, it's about housing. It's about roads. It's, it's every single aspect that touches each of our, our lives. So getting counted matters. And I, I think there's an opportunity uh, for leadership, not just from elected leaders, not just from com community leaders, students, but everyone in, in the community. And we can really um, make a, a huge difference. Uh, so um, as, as we're starting to wrap up, um, I, I wanted to give uh, just a, a general opportunity for us to to, to close with some thoughts. Uh, I'll start with you, Carmen. Any specific things you want to say? Um, and I will repeat before we close the phone numbers and website again. Yeah, so this flyer, this little postcard, is what we're handing out to people. And so I'll just say it in, in Spanish as it reads here in English. The census, el censo es seguro, es fácil y es importante. The census is safe, it's easy, and it's important. And this is the message that we want to convey to as many family members as we have here, especially the hard to count, the immigrant population, the young families that are new to this country. We want them to understand that they matter, that they count regardless of their status in this country. So that's the final message that I want to share is that we're working hard to make sure that everyone gets counted, that we keep all of our congressional seats, that we get the funding that each community uh, that requires to be successful and to thrive. So thank you, Brad, for this opportunity 
to present these this important issue here. Thank you, Carmen. David, any last thought? Yes, the, the one thing that I would add is that figuring out how to get connected is one of the key parts that we're facing. A United Way of Lake County has the 211 Lake County helpline. So if people are looking for a direct path to uh, census information, uh, dial 211 and speak to the uh, the folks at the other end of the line and they can help you get connected to the census department or to organizations um, uh, like the Highwood Library or like Mano a Mano that can help work through any questions you have about the census. It's also a great resource for anybody that has questions about COVID-19 or needs access to any other help. So I want to make sure that folks are comfortable um, uh, and are aware that uh, if you don't know where else to turn, just call 211. Thank you. Yeah, no, 211 is a great service and, and again, thanks for uh, setting that up. So let me, let me summarize real briefly. I'm going to go through the five things real quickly. Again, number one, the sense everybody counts. We need everyone on, on board. Number two, uh, the census does not, does not include a citizenship question. Number three, it's confidential. Number four, it's easy, really easy. And number five, it is so, so important. So let me close with the, the uh, information of how to complete the census. It takes less than 10 minutes. You can do it online. 2020census.gov, again, 2020census.gov, or call in English, 844-330-2020, or Spanish, 844-468-2020. Uh, that's ocho, cuatro, 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 seis, ocho, uh, dos, cero, dos, cero. Thank you so much. Carmen, David, you're laughing at my Spanish accent. Uh, I do my best. Uh, you're awesome, awesome. no worries. <laughs> I'm pleased and, uh, that you did that. Yep. Yeah, so thank you. You should hear me try to do full sentences. It's not much better, <laughs> uh, but I'm trying. Uh, so thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us. Carmen and David, thank you for uh, everything you're doing in the community, not just on census. You guys are making a difference in the community every day in every way. So we're so lucky to have you. Uh, to everyone, again, please do the census. Please have a, a nice weekend. And please remember, Social distancing, wear a mask outside, wash your hands off, and we're going to beat back this virus. Take care, everybody. Stay safe and stay healthy.